Hello, this video is a quick start guide for my magic brush, showing the most basic things of the asset usage. Don't like to waste your time with long introductions, so let's spring into action. I start from an empty Unity scene and add a new terrain here. You can use the brush on already existing terrain as well, and it doesn't matter if it's made with MapMagic or other tools. Then I add a new component named MapMagic Brush. Here are the main brush properties. The first one is a preset. I will say a couple of words about it later. But the main one is the graph. Now we'll assign a special brush graph that comes with a package. You can find it in MapMagic, Brush, Graphs, Add. Then I press the draw button and do some test strokes on the terrain. Now we'll lower terrain pixel error value just to make it display the whole detail. Just for convenience. Painting with the shift button pressed will apply an alternative effect, but only for the graphs that have this effect implemented. In this case it will lower the terrain value. Radius, hardness and spacing values could be found in every graph, while all of the values below are just values exposed in currently assigned graph. The radius value defines the size of the brush. It is set in world units. Note that its radius, not diameter, and thus the full brush size is twice bigger. You can change the radius value with the bracket keys. Left bracket reduces the brush size, while the right one increases it. The keyboard commands are active only when the sinew is focused, and this blue line is indicates that it is active. If I will make active the inspector window, changing the brush size won't work. Hardness value sets the radius percent of the brush that is applied with full opacity. You can see that the brush gizmo has two circles. The inner one shows where the brush will have 100% effect, and the outer one where its effect will fall down to zero. In the area between circles, the brush effect will gradually change. If I raise the hardness, it will create crisp round platforms at the height of the current intensity value. If I lower it, nearly all of the brush will be contained mostly of gradient and will reach its full strength only at the center, where the bright circle is. I will raise the hardness back to demonstrate next parameter. A spacing value defines the maximum distance the brush repeats itself on stroke and train. This value of 0.25 makes it repeat each quarter of radius. If I set it to 1 it will create the stamps that are applied every full radius. And if I set it to 2 it repeats each diameter, creating a chain of circles. When set to lower values, it will apply the brush effect more frequent. And since it's an add brush, it will add terrain more often, and this will result in high bumps. Note that the spacing value takes into account the whole distance traveled by the cursor. If I was set to 1 and will stomp around in one place, it will still apply stamps, since I am still passing a radius distance, maybe not just in a straight line. Below spacing listed the parameters that are unique for each graph. Most of brush graphs have the intensity value, but it doesn't guarantee that it will always be there. For example, if I will assign a forest or move, they will have absolutely different values. Obviously, for add graph, intensity value changes the amount it adds to terrain. Now a couple of words about presets. The top slot. While working with brush, you usually have to change brush parameters quite often. You've got to set a special brush for big fundamental changes, and have a special brush for details. And each time you've got to change most of these values, including the graph. Preset is the way to store your current brush parameters in an asset. So what I'll do now is save my current brush as a preset. I click Save As and select a folder and a file name. It will be small add. Then I will add some changes and save it as big add. And here, if I assign saved presets in this slot, it will change the brush parameters. Note that this slot is called preset source for a reason. Changing these values won't really modify a preset itself. Here we'll raise the small preset radius, and on changing back to small source, 
it will set the radius to original one. This way you can be free to quickly make a different setup from the current one. If you want to save this current setup to current preset source, press Save button. Or save as if you want to save it as a different one. MapMagic Brush comes with configured presets for every built-in graph. In MapMagic, Brush, Presets folder. Feel free to try them all. Actually, we'll do this in the next tutorial. And here is even simpler way to assign presets. In the Presets folder you can add your most used presets and switch between them with a single click. Or even with a keyboard by pressing a corresponding key from tilde to zero. The key name is written next to a preset slot. Now one more thing about using the brush with multiple terrains. All of the terrains to paint are listed in the terrains fold out. Here is only one, but I will create a new one and place it next to the first one. Now when I select the brush I can drag and drop new terrain here. Or just click Add all terrains. Note that terrain got to have the same resolution and word size to be added. It doesn't matter where the brush component is assigned. It could be a central terrain or a parent object to all of the terrains or even absolutely new independent object. Here are the basics of my magic brush interface. In next video I will try to sculpt something bearable using the presets that come with the asset and show what these presets do and then go into dive deeper into the graphs to see how exactly the graph should be made to work with the brush. Thanks for watching. Bye.